So first of all, I, I just want to thank Elon for coming. Uh, hungry, Absolutely. you didn't even have dinner, and we didn't yeah. even feed no, you no, properly. Sorry, sorry to be a bit late. Um, oh no, I just came from the Tesla factory on, in Fremont. Yes, is it was it something wrong? Did there's, you, there's always something wrong. You have to yeah. like at any given point. There's always something wrong. Yes, because um, there's just too many things going on. Yeah. So um, I mean, one of the trickiest things about a car is that there's. There's, there's thousands of, of individual components, there's thousands of unique components, and even if one of those things is missing, you can't make cars. Yes. So, I mean, today's uh, fiasco was, uh, I kid you not, um, we were missing a $3 USB cable. <laughs> okay, so we could not complete so, cars because... Like, so the whole line was stopped. Yeah, so essentially you, because you, it's part of the wiring harness, uh -huh. so you can't put the interior in um, without this, this cable. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we could either make a whole bunch of cars minus an interior, which means that you've got to stack no, them no, up in the yard. The resale value would be no good. Well, <laughs> it, it can be done, but, it, but it's, it's, it, then things go out of sequence. Oh, right, right, right. right. Um, and and uh, it's way more, um, it, it's, it's way more, it's way, you, can't, you don't have a music moving production line that you have to send people out to hundreds of, of cars that are sort of sitting in the storage yard. And... Um, so we, we, we uh, and this happens to be a particularly pernicious cable that's kind of like routed under the carpet it's, and yes. in, a, in a difficult place. Um, and it's literally $3. Um, and uh, so we, we basically had, uh, had to send people throughout the Bay Area to go and buy USB cables. Like, like literally Radio Shack, you like? Uh, like fries. Oh, fries, fries, oh, that's like better. You're gonna have yes, a hard time yes. getting a, a yeah. USB cable right now, fries. Oh, really? Because we bought every one of them. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, and, and so we were able to continue production and uh, I, don't, I don't want to belabor the anecdote, but essentially the, um, the supplier is in China um, and we had plan A and plan B. Um, and plan A was the, like the normal supply chain process. And, uh, but, but what the supplier did was instead of sending our uh, uh, parts in their own package, they grouped it together with a bunch of other stuff oh. for, for, for other companies and sent that all, all via some extremely slow boat uh, from China to LA. Um, and when it got to LA, the other stuff didn't pass customs. Oh. Um, and so they wouldn't, they wouldn't let our stuff through because they put it in like a barrel of fruit or something. I don't know, what they, I don't know yes. what, what, yes. what they put it in. Yes. But they, they, there's something that customs didn't like yeah. and the paperwork wasn't in order or whatever. So it got stuck there for, for like a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then we had plan B. So, like, so, so we, we called them and said, look, you've got to air freight some of these cables because they're just little cables yeah. um, to us. Um, and we talked to their U.S. subsidiary and ordered, ordered from the U.S. subsidiary who then communicated to China. But then because uh, this was another batch of, of, of pots, so it was kind of double the order, um, it exceeded the credit limit that we had. Oh, yeah, you got it. So it bounced off their credit limit, so they, they didn't ship it. Fascinating. So, so, so someone's losing their job now. This is <laughs> not oh, No, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't fire anyone. Uh, it's, I mean, it's pretty farcical. Oh, and, yeah. um, Anyway, so it's coming like tonight at 11 p.m. or something. Wow. Um, and these things are happening like all the time. This was like an unusual circumstance. Yeah. Um, that's, that's like one example, but there's, there's many things like that. So um, I, I guess, I mean, that's actually a really good example because that kind of leads into what I've always been fascinated by a lot of what you're doing is, well, I, I guess I, well, I'll start with how did you get into this? I mean, you know. Into cars? Uh, into cars, into taking over NASA, into, well, not taking over NASA, right. no, uh, 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 being a contractor for, for, for NASA. For the record, we're yes, not yes. taking over NASA. You're not taking over NASA, they're an independent organization. The, the, but yes, you all are exactly. a, a becoming a major uh, a provider of services for NASA, uh, obviously uh, kind of internet payments and payments generally. I mean, these are very three completely different spaces. I think a lot of people would not take someone seriously if they kind of had a business plan in one of these. Right. What, oh yeah, you take, take your time. Um, what, what was your, I, I mean, were, were, did you always think you were going to be doing this? Or <laughs> when did it dawn on you that, that you would try to revolutionize three industries? Well, um, when I was in college, I, I didn't actually expect to do it. So mm -hmm. it was not like this is some long fulfilled expectation. But, but when I was in, in college, I thought about what, what are the areas that would most affect the future of humanity, in my opinion. Um, and the three areas were the internet, sustainable energy, and space exploration, particularly if humanity becomes a multi-planet species. You know, there's kind of like a pretty substantial bifurcation in our sort of future if we're either uh, 
out there among the stars on multiple planets, or if we're confined to Earth until some obviously eventual extinction event. Yeah. Um, not that I'm pessimistic about life on Earth. I mean, I think some things are likely to be good. But even well, more likely to be good yeah. by far. Yellowstone's due for an explosion every hundred, several right, hundred exactly. thousand. Right, exactly. knows about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every seven hundred thousand. It's been seven hundred thousand since. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Yeah. Super I mean, volcano. For those of you who don't know, it would envelop. But well. Sorry. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. So, so we read I mean, the same books, I can right. tell. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, something bad is, is bound to happen if you give, if you give it enough time. Um, and civilization has been around for such a very short period of time that um, you know, th these, these time scales seem like very long, but on an evolutionary time scale, they're very short. Yeah. Um, you know, a million years on evolutionary time scale is, is really not much. Um, and you know, it's been around for four and a half billion years. Yeah. So. That's you know a very tiny, tiny amount of time, really. But for us, that would be. I mean, can you imagine if if uh, human civilization continued at anything remotely like the current pace of technology advancement for a million years? Where would we be? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think we're either extinct or on a lot of planets. Yes, we should. <laughs> Those, those are the two options. And, but, but given that, I mean, one, that's, that's kind of as epic as one can think about things, I mean, literally. Uh, I mean, how, how did you make that concrete? How does that turn into SpaceX, Tesla, and, and PayPal? Mm. Well, so I thought about those, these things kind of in the abstract, um, not, not from the expectation that I would actually have careers in those arenas. but. Um, but I, I wanted to be involved in at least one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and at first I thought the best bet was going to be electric cars. Yeah. And so the area of that I was studying was that, um, advanced capacitors. Right? So essentially capacitors that have an energy density um, exceeding that of batteries. Because they have a very high power density but, but low energy density. Yeah. So may have a lecture to that. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, know. no, we <laughs> should do that. I'm, no, that's, we'll get it later. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so. Um, Obviously, if you, if you could make a capacitor that had anywhere near the energy density of a battery and, and with its incredibly high power density and its quasi-infinite cycle and calendar life, then you would have a, an awesome solution for energy storage in mobile applications. Yeah. Um, so that, that I was going to sort of work on that and try to uh, leverage um, the equipment that was developed for advanced chip making and photonics uh, to um, create uh, uh, ultra-precise Capacitors at sort of at the molecular and this is when level. you were going to go into uh, grad school. Yeah, you, you, exactly. you, you had a brief stint at Stanford. That's right. Yeah. At, at a PhD in applied physics. Uh, applied physics, and material science. Right. Yeah. This and is what you were. So yeah. even then, you were thinking of kind of trying yeah, to yeah, do exactly. something in the space. Well, uh, well, actually, this was yeah. This was to, to work on energy storage solutions for electric cars. Yeah. Um, and um, and I'd actually worked at a company in Silicon Valley called Pinnacle Research, which did advanced um, capacitors. There, there were um, electrolytic. Uh, c capacitors, mm -hmm. sort of, um, and uh, th but the problem, and, and they actually were pretty good. They had like the energy density of a lead acid battery, mm -hmm. um, which for a capacitor is that's a big deal. Um, but they used uh, ruthenium tantalum uh, oxide, and there's a, oh, I think at the time there was maybe like one or two tons of ruthenium mined per year in the I world. See. So it's not a scalable solution. Yeah. Um, but they, I thought there could be some solid state solution. Like just like you know, say using chip making equipment. That was going to be the basic idea, but it was one of those things where I wasn't sure if success was one of the possible outcomes. <laughs> um, you know, and <laughs> like you can't. It's difficult to bound that problem exactly and say okay. So you're saying I wasn't. I felt like this was a destined failure. Is no, another no. way to parse that sentence. But anyway, so <laughs> um, no, I didn't. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think it would it was, yeah. would fail, but mm -hmm. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure that success was a possibility. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, and and generally. You want to embark on something. It's desirable yeah. to figure out if success is, is at least one of the possibilities. Right. Exactly. Because <laughs> for sure, failure is one of the possibilities. Yes. Um, but but ideally, you want to try to bracket it and say success is in the envelope of outcomes. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wasn't quite sure if that was the case. Um, I mean, I think success on an academic level would have been quite likely because you, you can publish some useless paper and. Uh, most papers are pretty useless, um, you know. We have a few. Don't take offense. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I mean, we have, we have how many PhD papers are actually used yeah. by someone ever? Um, I mean, no, that's a good point. Percentage-wise, it's not. No. It's not good. No. Uh, and um, so, so it, it could have been one of those outcomes where uh, you add some leaves to the tree of knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
and, and that leap is, nope, it's not possible. Right. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> there goes seven years of my life. Um, so, that was, so that was one, one path. And I was prepared to do that, but then the internet, was, the internet came along, and I was like, okay, the, the internet, I'm pretty sure success is one of the possible outcomes, and it seems like I could either do a, do sort of do a PhD and watch the internet happen, or I could participate and help build it in some fashion. You know, put a, you know, like I just couldn't stand the idea of, of watching it happen. Yeah, yeah. So that that's uh, so I decided to put things on hold uh, and start an internet company. And that that was kind of a we we worked on internet uh, like publishing software, yeah. maps and directions, yellow pages, kind of things. Yeah. And and we had as investors and. Um, Customers, the the media companies, so like yeah. New York Times Company, Knight Ritter, Hearst. And this was just at the early stages. I mean, this was like late it's 95. 90, 95. Oh, so yeah. it's really early stages. That's yeah. really out the gate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so then we, you know, we uh, the the reason we worked with the media companies because we knew they had money. Like there was no yeah. advertising money in 95. Right, right. Um, in fact, the idea of advertising the internet seemed like a ridiculous <laughs> to people. Um, obviously, not so ridiculous anymore, but. At, at, at the time, it was it seemed like a very unlikely yeah. proposition, um, and a lot of the media companies weren't even sure that they should be online. Right. Like, what's the point of that? Yeah. And did y'all think that PayPal was just going to be a you know simple little you know internet way to, or do you think it, w it was going to turn into the major kind of transaction processing engine that it is right now? Um, yeah. I didn't expect PayPal's growth rate to be what it was. Yeah. So, and that actually created major problems. So we started PayPal on University Avenue. Oh. Yeah. Um, after the first uh, month or so of the, the website being active, we had 100,000 customers. Really? That, that fa wow, I didn't realize it was Yeah, it was nutty. Oh, wow. Um, and how did it start? How did people just even know to use it? And I mean, obviously, both buyer and seller have to be involved. Yeah. Um, well, the, we started off first by offering people $20 if they opened an account mm. um, and $20 if they referred anyone. Oh. Um, and then we dropped it to $10. And then we dropped it to five dollars. As the network got bigger and bigger, the value of the network itself exceeded any um, uh, sort of carrot that we could offer. So how much did money did y'all spend with the, that kind of five, ten, twenty dollar incentive to get that critical mass going? That was a fair amount. I think it was probably sixty or seventy million dollars. Oh wow. Okay, so it was a substantial. Yeah, was oh, okay. So, so we're not talking peanuts here. Yeah, this is. Yeah, it depends on your relative scale. Yeah. We, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's can, a peanut yeah. to Google. Yes, yeah. no, that's uh, right, that's right. Yes, yeah. peanut. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, like Google's got 50 billion, Apple's got, I don't know, 150 billion, some crazy amount of money. Wow, that's yeah. just cash. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so it's not an outland. Well, yeah, no, that's, I didn't realize. I didn't realize like that was so core. 1% of Google's core. cash would be uh, $500 million, so, you, you know, for that's 0.1% of Google's cash. That's true. You're right. That's inexpensive. It's not Relative to, to them, to them <laughs> it's pretty inexpensive. Yeah. Well, that's right. Um, uh, and, and, and then we, did a, we just did a, a bunch of things to decrease the friction because, and, 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 and um, I mean it's just like bacteria in a Petri dish. Yeah. Um, so the, what, what you want to do is try to have one customer generate, um, you know, the, uh, like two customers. Yeah. Okay, or something like that, maybe three customers ideally. And then you want that, that to happen really fast. Um, and... Um, you could probably model, model it just like bacteria growth in a, in a, in a, in a petri dish, like, yeah. and, and it, it'll just ex, it'll expand very quickly until it hits the side of the sides of the petri dish. And yeah, it slows down. Um, and then after PayPal, then I mean, to some degree, you know, the, especially us in Silicon Valley, we kind of understand the internet. We we know people. I mean, PayPal is yeah. obviously of a scale that um, you know is is noteworthy. But then SpaceX just seems really, you know. Like, how, how, well, one, how, how did you decide that I'm definitely going to do that? And then, like, what's the first thing that you do? Like, how, how do you even, like, go out? Like, I, I don't even know how to start trying to make a rocket company. Um, well, neither did I, really. Um, the, and, in fact, the first three launches failed. So it's not as though it was, like, you know, spot on. It's like, but, <laughs> did not hit the bullseye. But, but even getting the point that you're launching um, rockets, I don't even know how to, like, how do you get there? And... Uh, like, what did you do on, like, one, how did you decide, and then what did you do on day one? Like, who did you call, or did you write a plan? Did you start, I, 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 don't, I don't even know. Yeah, actually, I mean, the, the origin of PayPal um, is, or rather uh, SpaceX, is, is that um, uh, I was trying to figure out why uh, that we had not sent any people to Mars. Because yeah. the obvious next step after, after Apollo was to send people to Mars. So, but, but what in fact happened was that we sent a few people to the moon, and then we didn't send anyone after that to the moon or Mars or anything. Mm -hmm. um, 
But if you'd asked people in 1969, what would 2013 look like? They would, they would have said there'll be a base on the moon, there would be, we would have at least sent some people to Mars, and maybe there'd even be a base on Mars, there'd yeah. be like orbiting space hotels, yeah. and there'd be all this awesome stuff in space. Yeah. And, and, and that's what people expected. Yeah. Um, and if you'd said, well, actually, the United States in 2013 will not be able to send anyone to orbit, but I'll tell you what will exist is that there'll be this device in your, in your pocket that's like the size of a, it's more than a deck of cards that has access to all the world's information and you can talk to anyone on planet Earth. Yeah. Um, and even if you're like in you know, some remote village somewhere, as long as there's something called the internet, they wouldn't know what that means, yeah. of course, um, then you would ha you'd be able to communicate to anyone instantly and have access to, to all of hu humanity's knowledge. So like bullshit, there's right. no way that that's going to be <laughs> Right, true. right, right. Um, and yet we all have that and, uh, and, and space is not happening. So I was trying to figure out like, what was the deal here. And this was like, 2001. And it was just a friend of mine asked me what I'm going to do after PayPal. And I said, well, you know, I've always been interested in space, but I don't think there's anything that an individual could do in space because it's the province of government exactly. and usually large government. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm curious as to when we're going to send someone to Mars. So I went to the NASA website to try to figure out like, where's the place that tells you that. And I couldn't find that. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, like, Either I'm like bad at looking at the website or they have a terrible website because surely there must be a that, date. That should be a big date, yeah. Yeah, yeah it yeah. should be like, you yeah, know, this is the, this is the, this should be on the front page. And then I discovered actually that uh, NASA had no plans to send people to Mars and or even really back to the moon. Yeah. Um, so this, so uh, this was really disappointing. I, I thought, well, maybe this is a question of uh, uh, national will. Like, have, have, do, we, do we need to get people excited about space again? And, and try to get NASA a bigger budget, and then, that, then, then we would send people to Mars. And, and so I uh, started researching the area, um, becoming more familiar with space, reading lots of books, and uh, came up with this idea to do something called Mars Oasis, which was to send a small greenhouse uh, with seeds and dehydrated gel. That land Upon landing, you hydrate the gel. You have green plants on a red background, and the, the public is uh, the public responds to precedents and superlatives. Mm. Yeah. So it's the f the first life on Mars, the furthest that life's ever traveled, mm. and you'd have this money shot of green plants on a red background. Yeah. So yeah. That, that 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 seemed like it would get people pretty excited. Um, so that that I, I started getting into this and, and trying to figure out, okay, well, can I f afford to build the spacecraft? Because uh, I, I had some money from as a result of PayPal. Yeah. But it had to fit within that budget, and I figured we had to do two missions because if we uh, if we only did one and it failed, then it might have like the opposite effect. But you were um, willing to bet the farm, so to speak, on this. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I figured like I would. I was willing to spend half the money that I got from yeah. PayPal. Yeah. Um, with no expectation of return. Right. Um, because I thought this was just something that was pretty important, and uh, yeah, I'm like. Seemed like it could spend half the money on main and PayPal on this, and it would be if, if that got NASA a bigger budget and resulted in us going to Mars, that would be a good, pretty good outcome. And um, when your friends came or your family came up to you and said, "Look, you know, there's nations that can't do this. You know, you're you're a guy, but you have yeah. some resources." What did you say or do or think? Well, so th um, I, I had a lot of friends of mine try to talk me out of starting a rocket company because they thought it was crazy and. It <laughs> A friend of mine made me watch a video of rockets blowing up. <laughs> uh, and you know, there were just lots of people that thought it was a really crazy idea. And there were some people that had tried to start rocket companies, not succeeded. And they, they tried to talk me out of it. And, um, but the thing is that the, the premise for talking me out of it was, well, we think you're going to lose the money that you invest. And I was like, well, right. um, that was my expectation anyway. Right. So I don't really mind if I lose, you know, I mean, not mind, but I mean, it's, it's not. It's not like I was trying to figure out the rank ordered best way to invest money, right. and on that basis, um, you know, chose space. Right. It's not like that's. <laughs> you know, I thought, wow. You weren't looking at like money, money market bonds, AAA bonds, right, exactly. rocket company. Like you weren't like do real yeah, estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah real. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. invest in shoemaking, anything. <laughs> um, and whoa, space is, is <laughs> highest ROI. Yeah, you know, exactly. that's, that is not what I. That is yeah. not, not, it wasn't the premise. Um, I just thought that it was important that uh, humanity expand beyond Earth, and we weren't doing that, so maybe there was something I could do to kind of spur, spur that on. Um, and then I, um, I, I was able to compress the costs of the spacecraft and everything down to a relatively manageable number, and I got stuck on the rocket. 
the, the US rockets were way too expensive. I ended up going to Russia, flew to Russia three times to negotiate purchase of a, an ICBM. That, I tried to buy two of the biggest ICBMs in the Russian fleet in 2001 and 2002. Um, and I actually ne negotiated a I'll price. just let that statement stand. I'm not even yeah. going to. Um, I, I, I mean, that's. Uh, and, and, uh, well, I, that's actually, I actually have to. Like, who did you call? Like, <laughs> like no, I, I mean, I. I, I this you open is, the I'm, yellow pages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, go to I'm ICBMs. in the market. Like, oh. I mean, how does this. I mean, I don't want to get too much in the way, but I am curious. Just this one particular thing. You, are, you decide at some point you need to buy an ICBM. Yeah. Well, actually, at first I tried to buy just a normal ro launch vehicle that they used to launch satellites. Right. Those were too expensive. I, I see, I yeah. see. Um, the, the, the Boeing Delta II would have cost $65 million right. each, and so the two would have been 130, and then I was like, whoa, okay, that breaks my budget right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I tried to negotiate with them, and that was not... That How much does an ICBM go for? Progress. I'm curious, what's the market rate for one of those? Um, well... This was right after the fall, it might have gone up. Yeah, yeah, it's gone up a lot since right. then. Um, right. But in, in 2001, it, it would have been about $10 million each. For, for, so two would have yeah. been 20. And, and then, um, and then I, I thought I could get the rest of the mission down to also around 10 per. So, it, so we'd have a, a dual mission with like two identical launches, two identical spacecraft, and um, you know, for like roughly $40 million. And so I thought that, okay, I'll, I can do that. And, but you must have had some like, you know, rocket scientists advising you at this point. I mean, this sounds like you were serious. I mean, you were. Yeah, yeah, and it engaged a, a, a bunch of, sort of consultants. Right, and, right. And I kind of started to get, to get familiar with the space industry. I and, um, but then after the third trip to Russia, I, I, I came to realize that I was actually wrong about um, that on, on my first premise, that, that there was a lack of will. In fact, I think that there's a tremendous amount of will in the United States for uh, space exploration. Because um, the United States is essentially a nation of explorers. Right. I mean, it's a distillation of the human spirit of exploration. Um, so of course, um, it was quite silly of me to think that, th that, that, that people lack motivation. But what people don't want to think is that, okay, um, going to sending people to Mars is gonna be so expensive that they'll have to give up like healthcare or something. Right, you know, They're right. not gonna do that. Um, so it's gotta be, got, it's, it's gotta be that going to Mars is not going to cause some meaningful d drop in their standard of living. Right. You know, right. So if it's like maybe a quarter of a percent or half a percent of GDP, something like that is palatable. Right. Um, anyway, so, 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 so I thought, okay, it's not really gonna maybe matter that much if I do this mission because what really matters is, is having a, uh, a way. So, so I was wrong, I, 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 thought, I, thought, I thought there was there wasn't enough will, but there actually was plenty of will if people thought there was a way. So, so then I said, okay, well, I need to work on the way. Yeah. Um, how hard is it really to make a rocket? In history, historically, all rockets have been expensive, so therefore, right. in the future, mm. all rockets will be expensive. But actually, it's not, that's not true. If you say, what is a rocket made of? And say, okay, it's made of aluminum, titanium, some copper, um, carbon fiber, if you want to go that direction. Um, and, and you can break down and say, what is, what is the raw material cost of all these components? And if you have them stacked on the floor and could wave a magic wand um, so that the cost of rearranging the atoms mm. was zero, um, then what would the cost of the rocket be? Yeah. And I was like, wow, okay, it's really small. It's like you know, 2% of what a rocket right. costs. Right. So clearly, be in how the atoms are arranged. Right. The, the, the other, so, so you gotta figure out sort of, okay, how can we, get the atoms in the right shape um, f much more e efficiently. Yeah. And um, so I had a series of, of meetings on Saturdays with people that were, some of whom were, were still working at the big aerospace companies, just to try to figure out, is there some catch here that I'm not, that I'm not yeah, appreciating? Yeah. And I couldn't figure out, there didn't seem to be any catch, so started SpaceX. And, and, you, and you ended up, I mean, you, know, you had some failures, but obviously some huge yeah. successes. What was the cost that you were able to build this rocket for relative to wh what they were being built for before? So, so let's see, the, for, for the Falcon 1, which is the first rocket we built, and the first three flights did not make it. In fact, um, yeah, I mean, we got, got sort of progressively f further, but um, like the first rocket like came and cra landed maybe a couple hundred yards away from yeah. the launch site and you know, tiny fragments. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, anyway, that, that, that rocket ended up costing 
um, around six million dollars. Wow. Um, compared to other rockets in that class, which were about say twenty-five million dollars. Wow, so significant. Yeah, it'd be like a quarter. Wow, wow. Um, and but th but there's an even better step beyond that, which is to make rockets reusable. Yeah. Um, so, but right now our, that that is around around what what our comparison price is, excluding the re refurbished ICBMs. Yeah. So, if you say building a rocket from new, how does the SpaceX rocket compare to a rocket from Boeing or Lockheed? It's about a quarter of the price. Mm. Um, um, however, if we make it reusable, then it can be uh, two orders of magnitude cheaper. Two orders of magnitude cheaper, well, one hundredth the price. That's right. So, so w I mean, and, to, and I've for seen... You. <laughs> for only, for only today, we <laughs> Memorial Day <laughs> sale. Uh, what, 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 uh, and I've seen some. I mean, Y'all are doing like these vertical landings, yeah. Like, like literally out of like the nineteen yeah. fifties, like like sci-fi movies. Yep. And that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But essentially, the rocket needs to come back and land at the launch site, and then um, reload propellant, take off again, like, uh, an, air, like an airplane. And how uh, far I do you mean, think we are to, yeah. from that? Like, when, when do you think, like, you know, your best guess is when we'll, we'll actually well, see that happening? I mean, I'm, I'm hopeful we can do it next year. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's. Um, we got we got some ambitious stuff at Khan Academy for the yeah. next year too, so we can uh, compare. Um, We're redesigning the site, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we've been working on it for a long time. I, yeah. I should say, yeah. it, SpaceX has been around for 11 years, and thus far we have not recovered any rockets. We've recovered the spacecraft yeah. uh, from orbit, so that 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 was great. Um, but none of our attempts to recover the rocket stages have been successful. Yeah. Um, the rocket stages have always blown up, basically yeah. on reentry. Yeah. Now we think we've we think we figured out why that that was the case, um, and it, it's a tricky thing because Earth's gravity is really quite strong um, and with uh, advanced, an advanced rocket you can do maybe two to three percent of your liftoff mass to orbit um, typically and then reusability subtracts two to three percent because you have to uh, yeah. yeah so then you've got like nothing to orbit or negative right and, and that's obviously not helpful um, and uh, so the, the trick is to try to shift that from say two to three percent in, in an expendable configuration, mm -hmm. put to, to make the rocket um, mass efficiency, engine efficiency, and so forth, so much better that it, it moves to around maybe three and a half to four percent mm. in an expendable configuration, and then try to get clever about the reusability elements tr and try to drop that to around the two one and a half to yeah. two percent level. So you have a net payload to orbit of about two percent. But you're doing it at one at two orders of magnitude cheaper. Yeah, absolutely. Because so. I, our Falcon 9 rocket costs about yeah. $60 million, but the propellant uh, cost, which is mo mostly oxygen, that's two-thirds oxygen, one-third one fuel, um, is only about $200,000. Wow. Um, and it's much like a, like a 747. It costs yeah. about as much to uh, refuel our rocket as it does to refuel 747, you know, within... You're yeah, pretty close, essentially. So, so what happens, I mean, if, assuming y'all are successful and you all have proven yourself to be you know, successful on kind of these audacious things in the past, I mean, what happens? I mean, that seems like it's, it, I mean, what happens in the next five, ten years in the space industry if y'all are successful there? Uh, I mean, do we get to Mars? Do we, is, do we have kind of uh, market forces, commercialization of space starting to happen? Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. Well, the, the first step is that we need to earn enough money to keep going as a company. So we have to make sure that we're launching satellites, uh, you know, commercial satellites like um, uh, broadcast communications, yeah. mapping, um, and the government satellites that do scientific missions, uh, Earth-based or, or, or space-based missions, GPS satellites, that kind of thing. Um, and and then also servicing the space station, tr transferring cargo to and from the space station, which we've done a few times, and and then taking people to and from the space station. So so we've got to we've got to service the sort of needs, um, Earth-based needs to launch satellites, and that that pays the bills. Yeah. But but in doing that, keep improving the technology to the point where uh, we we can make full reusability work, and we have sufficient scale and sophistication to be able to take people to Mars. Wow. And so you think this is going to be a reality? And what, what, what's your best guess of when we're going to have someone on Mars? 
I think I think probably about twelve years. Uh, twelve. Yeah. That's that's Give not. And, and you think it'll be a round trip? It'll, it'll be. Yeah. It'll, it won't just be a <laughs> some type of permanent colony on on Mars. Yeah. I, I think it's probably a round trip. Wow. <laughs> so, so for, for I mean, it's not for I, sure. I, I, I could I could talk about this for but I mean, the our, people know. So the aspiration will be around for. Yeah. yeah. No, this 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 yeah, this is mind blowing. And I mean, and then on Tesla, I, I mean, Tesla is obviously I mean, from from our from my vantage, it's, it's huge success. I mean, it's I mean, what do you think is is in in that in well, well, one, I mean, I'll ask kind of the same question. What did you think? You, you know, this is something that GM and Toyota and these massive multi-billion-dollar organizations yeah. have been trying. You know, what gave you the confidence to kind of pursue it? And, and now that it, it seems to be a, a huge success, wh where do you think this industry is going to be in the next five, ten years? Um, yeah, so with, with Tesla, the goal is to try to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. Um, I think it would happen anyway, because just out of necessity. Yeah. But um, because we have an unpriced externality in the cost of gasoline, yeah. um, we we're pricing in the environmental effects of CO2 in the oceans and atmosphere. Uh, that that's causing um, the, norm, the normal market forces to not function properly. And so the goal of Tesla is to uh, try to act as a catalyst to accelerate um, the, those sort of normal forces, the, the, yeah. the normal sort of market reaction that would, would occur. Yeah. Um, we're trying to have a catalytic effect on that. Yeah. And, and try to make it happen, I don't know, maybe 10 years sooner than it would otherwise occur. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's the goal of, of, of Tesla. So, that's the reason we're making electric cars, and not any other kind of car. And we also ha supply powertrains to Toyota and to Mercedes, and, and maybe to other ca car companies in the future, to um, accelerate their um, uh, production of electric vehicles. So, so, that, so that, that's, the, that's the sort of goal there. And so far, it's you know, working out pretty well. I mean, I just saw a news report earlier today that y'all are sold more t Model S's than uh, you are leading that segment of, of the industry, that the Mercedes S-Class, the BMW 7 Series, or the, the Lexus uh, right. LS 400, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, actually, that, that seems to be the case. Um, <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I, I didn't realize they sold so few cars in that segment. That's... Because um, <laughs> <laughs> we don't sell that many cars. Right, we sell right. 5,000 a yeah. quarter, you know, 20,000. Well, out here, they seem like, you know, every yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, you know, well, this is our home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this our home is team, you know. Um, so it's, uh, we, be, we better sell out in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Answer, like, really no, but that's, and, and uh, well, I mean, it's a similar thing. I mean, what, what, how did you start? What gave you the confidence? And, and I mean, do you, do you see yourselves? I mean, it's kind of a major automotive mainstream brand in, in five, ten years, uh, all the way down to kind of the, you know, the competing with the Honda Accords and Civics? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, our goal is not, uh, just, it's not sort of to become a brand, big brand or to compete with uh, Honda Civics. Uh, but rather to advance the cause of electric vehicles. Mm. So we're just going to keep making more and more electric cars and driving the price point down until the industry is very firmly electric. You know, like maybe half of all cars made are electric or something like that, which is not to say that we expect to make all half of all cars. We, we, we want to just have that catalytic effect until at least that occurs. And I think at the point at which there's you know, we're approaching half bulk new cars made are electric, then I think that's, I would consider that to be kind of the victory condition. Wow. Um, and and the, so the faster we can bring that day, the, the better. Um, wow. When, when would be your guess when that happens? Um, well, I made a bet with someone about three years ago that it would be sooner than 20 years. So it's 17 years from now. But, I th but that's, I think, I, I, that's conservative. I think it's probably... You know, but maybe maybe thirteen or fourteen years, something wow. like that. Right, right about it's the time. Happen, like, right, right when we're going to Mars. <laughs> it'll, right. It'll, it'll be. be it'll, it'll be exciting, kind of exciting times. Yeah. <laughs> this will be true. Those, yes. that, it just could. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. As I was thinking about that, it was like, oh, those time frames are kind of coincident. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the nature of, of new technology adoption is it tends to follow an S curve. So, so what usually happens is people underpredict it in the beginning because yeah. people tend to extrapolate on a straight line, and and then they'll overpredict it kind of at the midpoint, and because there's there's late adopters, right. and then you know th it, it, it'll actually take longer than people think at the midpoint, but much shorter than people think at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, but I'm pretty excited about how things are going. It's, um, and in fact, I think. 
I think that the, the pace of technology improvement is in, in, in energy storage, electric, electric energy storage is, is really moving faster than anyone thinks. Wow, wow. Yeah. I got one, one more, what are we doing on time? Where's Esther? Nine o'clock. Oh, o'clock. So how much time do you have? We, I wanna make sure uh, people. Well, I guess we have another 15 minutes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so I'll finish with one last question and then we'll open it up. I mean, what, what advice do you have for us? Um, at Khan Academy. I, I mean, mean, you guys seem to be doing really great, so. Yeah. I was, I was wondering if you had well, advice for me. Um, oh, no, well. <laughs> cool. um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it seems like you're doing, doing, doing an amazing job of really super leveraged, you know, I mean, obviously a small team and you're having a dramatic effect on. Yeah, half these people don't even work here. They're just <laughs> like, so like, it's even, yeah. Right, it's, right, so it's, uh, I think, very impressive uh, <laughs> thing you're doing um, to, to spread knowledge and and understanding, you know, throughout the world, the, the universe soon. The if, universe, you, if you if you exactly. hold up your end of the bargain, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's actually kind of funny. Like, like um, you know, if you think of like what is education? Like, you're basically downloading data and algorithms into your brain, and it's 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 actually amazingly bad in conventional education because like it shouldn't be like this huge chore. Um, uh, so you're making it way way better. Um, but I mean, I think I think I think a lot of the things that I would say you've probably heard a hundred times, um, and and in fact are if if not doing like the more you can gamify the uh, the process of learning, the better. Like I w for my kids, I do not have to encourage them to play video games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have to like pry them from their hands, yeah. like like yeah. crack. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's like drop that crack needle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have that problem at your house too. <laughs> yeah, yes. Exactly. The, the crack is addictive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so it's, you know, it's, it's it, to the degree that you can make uh, somehow learning like a game, th yeah. that then yeah. it's, it's better. Um, and I think, unfortunately, like a lot of education is very vaudevillian. Um, yeah. you, you've got, uh, you know, someone standing up there kind of lecturing at people, uh, and they've done the same lecture 20 years in a row, and they're not very excited about it, <coughs> and that lack of enthusiasm, you know, is conveyed to the students. They, they're not very excited about it. They don't know why they're there. Yeah, like, why are we learning this stuff? We don't even yeah. know why. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think a lot of things people learn are probably there's no point in, in learning them. Because um, they, they, they never use them in, uh, in the future. Because um, who's going to launch a rocket into space? I mean, that's just like, yeah, yeah exactly. That never happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, well, you, know, you have to say, like, w people, I think, don't stand back and say, well, why are, are we teaching people these things? And we should tell them probably why we're teaching yeah. these things. Because a lot of kids are just in, in school kind of puzzled as to why yeah. they're there. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think if you can explain the why of things, then that makes a huge difference to people's motivation. Yeah. Then they understand, they understand purpose. Yeah. Um, so I think that's pretty important, uh, and just make make it entertaining. But I think just in general, like conventional education should be massively overhauled. And I'm sure you very much agree with that. But yeah. So, so it's, it's, I mean, the analogy that I, I sometimes use is like if you've seen like Batman, like the like, like Chris Nolan movie, like the recent one, and it's pretty freaking awesome, right? Um, and you've got incredible special effects, great script, uh, multiple takes, amazing actors, and great sound, and it's very, it's very engaging. Um, but if, if you would instead say, okay, that ha uh, even if you had the same script, so at least it's the same script, and you said, okay, now that script, instead of having movies, we're, we're going to have the, that, that script performed by the local town troupe. Right. Okay, and, and so in every, in every small town in America, if movies didn't exist, they would have to then re recreate yeah. The Dark Knight. Right. You know, with like home, like home sewn costumes yeah. and like, you know, jumping <laughs> across the stage <laughs> <laughs> and not, not getting their lines quite right, right and not really looking like, you know, yeah. the, the people in, 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 the, in, the, in the movie and, and no special effects. And yeah. and, I mean, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> it would be yes. terrible. That, that's, that, that's right. That's, yeah. yeah. Very, very, very. That, that's education. <laughs> that's education. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with that, and, and, and I apologize to all of you guys for hogging up all of the time because obviously I could talk for hours about this stuff. But I, and we do have time, I think five or ten minutes for, for a handful of questions. Um, if none of you all have any, I have about nine more, but yes. Um, yeah, so I noticed uh, I picked up two kind of themes from, from what you were discussing. One was uh, uh, somewhat audacious goals, um, and the other was I don't think I heard you use the word profit in anything that you spoke about. Um, you seem to be, each, each thing is pointed at like reinvigorating an industry or bringing back uh, space missions. How much of the, your success do you attribute to 
having really audacious goals or versus um, just not being focused on the short term, you know, money coming in or I don't know, investors? Unfortunately, I, 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 one, and one does have to be focused on the short term and money coming in when creating a company because otherwise the company will, will die. So the, the, I think that a lot of times people think like creating companies going to be fun. I would say it's not. It's really not that fun. I mean, there are periods of fun, and there are, there are periods of where it's where it's just awful. Um, and particularly if you're the CEO of the company, um, you actually have a distillation of all the worst problems in the company. Um, so there's no point in spending your time on things that are going right. So you only spend on things on your time on things that are going wrong. And, and there are things that are going wrong that s other people can't, can't take care of. So you have like the worst. You have a filter for the crappest problem in the company. <laughs> the most pernicious and painful problem. Um, so I wouldn't say it's, it's it, I think you have to feel quite compelled to do it um, and have a, a fairly high pain threshold. And there's a friend of mine who, who says like starting a company is like staring into the abyss and, and eating glass. Um, and there's some truth to that. Um, the staring into the abyss part is that you're going to be constantly facing the, the um, extermination of the company. Because uh, most, most startups fail. Uh, it's like 90%, arguably 99% of, of startups fail. So, uh, so, so you, you, that, that's the staring into the abyss part. You're const constantly saying, OK, this, if, if, if I don't get this right, the company will die. Um, it should be quite stressful. Quite stressful. And, and then um, the eating glass part is you've got, you've got to do you've got to do the problems you've got to, you've got to work on the problems that the company needs you to work on not the problems you want to work on and, and so that the, that's you end up working on problems that, that uh, you'd really wish you weren't working on and so that's, that's the eating glass part um, and then that goes on for a long time so how do you <laughs> keep your focus on the big picture when you're constantly faced with we could be out of business in a month Well, it's it's just a very small percentage of mental energy is on the on the big picture. Like you know you know you know where you're, you're generally head, heading for, and and the, the actual path is going to be some sort of zigzaggy thing in that direction. Um, and try not to deviate too far from the path that that, that you want to be on, but you're going to have to do that to some degree. Um, but I, I don't want to I don't want to diminish the. I mean I think the prod, the profit motive is a is a is a good one if the rules of an industry are properly set up. So there's nothing fundamentally wrong with profit. In fact, profit just means that uh, people are paying you more for the, the, whatever you're doing than you're spending to create it. That's a good thing. <laughs> and and if, if, you're not, if, if that's not the case, then you'll be out of business, and rightfully so. Because you're, you're, you're not adding enough value. Now, there are cases, of course, where people uh, will do bad things in order to um, Achieve profit, but but that's actually uh, quite unusual. I mean, because because usually the, the, the rules are set up mostly correctly, like not completely, but mostly correctly. Well, I think we have time for one one more question, Joel. This yeah, yeah I have an important one. Okay, very good. Yes, <laughs> no. Okay, so a few months ago you teased Hyperloop, <laughs> um, and we haven't yes. heard anything since. Um, so first of all, uh, a few of us engineers were talking about it. And I think we have a few ideas if you need help, but. <laughs> If you feel comfortable, uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit more. Uh, I was reading about the California high-speed rail, and oh. it, was, it was quite depressing. Um, because uh, California taxpayers are going to be on the hook to, you know, to, to build the most expensive uh, high-speed rail per mile in the world, and the slowest, um, <laughs> which, which is, yeah. those are not the superlatives you want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and it's like, damn, like we're in California, we make super high-tech stuff. What, why are we going to be spending, a hundred, and not, now the estimates are around $100 billion for a, a something that, that will take two hours to go from um, LA to, to San Francisco. I'm like, OK, well, I can get on a plane and do that in 45 minutes. Um, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, and isn't there some better way to do it than that? Um, so so uh, if, if you just say, OK, well, what would you ideally want in, in, a, in, a, in a transportation system? You'd say, OK, well, you'd want something that relative to existing modes of transportation is 
faster, let's say twice as fast, costs half as much per ticket, um, can't crash, is immune to weather, um, and is, you know, you can make the whole thing like self-powering with like solar panels or something like that. That would be pretty, that would that, be, a, that'd be a, good, great. A, yes. a good outcome. Yes. Um, and so what wh would do that? Um, and what's the fastest way short of inventing teleportation that you could do something like that? Um, and some of the elements of that solution are fairly obvious, and some of, it, some of them are not so obvious. Um, and then the details, um, the devil's in the details of, of actually making something like that work. Um, but uh, I came to the conclusion that, that, that there is something like that that could work um, and would be practical. Is this the, uh, the, around the evacuated tubes, the, the vacuum tubes, like um, that the it's old bank? Like that. It's some, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you haven't been more public with, with no. what this is? Um, no, although I did say that once Tesla was profitable that I would uh, talk more about it. Um, but we haven't done our earnings call yet, so I, th I think I should probably do it yeah. after the earnings call. Um, and it, it, the thing is, like, I, I, I kind of strung out on the things that I'm doing, so adding another yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like doesn't, you know, that's Learning the guitar, you could, you could yeah. pick up yeah, all sorts of things. Right. I, I tried learning the violin. Yes. That's, by the way, a hard thing to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, I mean, it's launching like, rockets, <laughs> electric cars. Yeah. Revolutionizing transportation. Yeah, that's um, I cannot but play the violin at yeah. all. Very horrible. <laughs> um, you know, if you think about the future, you want a future that's better than the past. Yeah. And, yeah. and so if we had something like the Hyperloop, I think that would be like, cool. Like, you'd look forward to the day that that was working. Yeah. You know? and, and if something like that, even if it was only, even if it only was in one place, yeah. you know, from LA to San Francisco or New York to DC or something like that, then, um, it would be cool enough that it would be like a tourist attraction, yeah. be like a riot or yeah. something. Yeah. So, so even if, if um, some of the initial assumptions didn't work out and the economics didn't, didn't, didn't work out quite as, as one expected, it would be like cool enough to be like, I want to journey that place just to, just to ride on that thing. That would be pretty cool. Um, wow. And so that's, I think, how if, if you come up with a new technology, it should, it should feel like that. You should really, yeah. like, if you told it to an objective person, would they look forward to the day that that thing became available? Yeah. And, and be like, you know, it'd be pretty exciting to, to do something like that. Um, or, or an aircraft. Like, I thought it was really disappointing when the, when the Concorde was taken out of mm. commission and there was no supersonic uh, transport available. Yeah. Um, and of course, the 787 has had some issues. Yeah. Um, so, um, but, it's, but the thing is, the 787, even in the best case scenario, is only a slightly better version yeah. of the 777. Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, mm. you know, not, not that exciting. So, so they're. they're, they're this is something that you are working on, and, and no, one day in the not too far future, or there's some plans or consultants involved or something. There's um, <laughs> you right. made some phone calls to Russia. Um, <laughs> no, every now and then, like this, like th it's sort of percolating away, yeah. and then I'm I'm not, I'm not actively thinking about it, but then there'll be some new element of that. I'll think, oh well, you yeah. know, this would make it better. Fascinating. Um, yeah. No, well, th I mean, I, I think I'm speaking for everyone. This is like the most epic possible conversation <laughs> one could have over the, about the course of an hour. And I think all of us would love to chat with you for hours on end, but thank you so much. I mean, I know you have a lot of free time, so it probably wasn't that big of a deal yeah. for you to come here. Uh, but yeah, it was a huge honor, and I think to, it's inspired all of us to go out and change the world and, and the universe. Cool. Thank, right. thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. No, right.